that's the noise of introductions for you guys here at Come to Papa 3. We're going to start it off. We have two streams. We're streaming these uh, crew battles. Right now we have a one side. I think it is uh, CFO versus NFL. And right now this is going to be us. Puerto Rico versus Southwest Florida. I am Yoma. And right here I have who are we? Take Crusader. Take Crusader. Nice to meet you. This is the first time we're going to be <laughs> meeting. And we're going to be talking a bunch of crap while we see our players destroy each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. We wouldn't have it any other way. Exactly. And, you know, the best thing the way we do is start to introduce. So who's your first player? Our first player here is one of our uh, up-and-comers. His name is Frostex. He plays a couple of characters. I think today we're going to be mainly seeing Pokemon Trainer. Though. Pokemon Trainer? Yes. He was. Uh, he came onto the scene late in the game in Smash 4. He was a Wi-Fi warrior, never really come out to tournaments. And then as soon as he did, his foreign started kicking butt, taking names. And within a couple months of coming to tournaments, he found himself on our PR. And, uh, That's great. That's great because when you have a star like the Wi-Fi, when you start a Wi-Fi or even just like start the w small weeklies that are like eight peep Eggman brackets, that's always a good start. Uh, to introduce my t uh, first player, it is Eval. He is a NES player um, and from the main TO of Puerto Rican Smash, and he's also the main organizer of First Attack, which is like the, one of the main tournaments of the circuit in Puerto Rico. He is basically uses NES because that's his favorite character, like how he looks and stuff, but he was a Peach main in oh, Melee. It looks like we actually have gameplay going on already. And they already started, so like. You said that Prospect already was using Pokemon Trainer. Ness and him actually can go really well. They're both short limbs, but the way how I can see that Ivysaur, when he when Prospect changes to Ivysaur, it can get a little bit difficult for Ness. I think that uh, in general, he's going to try to explore uh, Eval's movements a bit with Squirtle first, kind of get the Lotus on combos, and there's the Ivysaur switch. And starting to feel a little bit comfortable, so I think that might have been a misinput to put him in that situation. Mm -hmm. Lucky he didn't get away with less or more. So one of the things I gotta tell you about Eval is that he loves fighting against big bodies. He's, he figures that all big bodies are bad characters, and that Ness especially it destroys all big bodies. So right now, like he's trying to see when he can get that first starting move to kind of capitalize on that. But you know, most often, you know, well, you don't play a lot of Pokemon trainers. Like I gotta tell you, in Puerto Rico, there's not a, actually a lot of Pokemon trainers. I think there's just the one player, and the, the, re the he's only East Coast. Eval hasn't played with it often. So I'm just worried about the other two characters, not so much the Charizard. True. I, would, I wouldn't I would agree with the first part that all heavies are bad characters, but I would Ooh. say that Ness definitely is comfortable fighting most of the big bodies in this game. And uh, there we see the first stop disappear, but this is not an undurable deficit yet for Prospect. He does need to uh, focus up in there. Oh! So, there it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I... It, Eva likes to kind of see, uh, you know, go for these kind of reads. Like he's kind of trying to contest. He's like, "Ah, oh, you're not gonna press a button there." You know, he's trying to hope that you, that a person kind of is still kind of afraid. But you first have to instill that fear. So not yet. Prospect is still not that that afraid of he's not gonna press a button yet. Prospect, a, a very analytical player. He's a, the type of guy who will literally write things down in a little notepad, like the clean sets, and he's just hungry, hungry, hungry for more knowledge. Like always trying to learn and make himself better moment to moment. So it's it's very interesting watching and feel out a brand new opponent that he's totally unfamiliar with. Like as you, as you see, like you know, I told you, I told you before that he doesn't really like to use the PK fires too erratically. He likes to work positional. There he's waiting with the yo yo again, trying to make that edge card. That could be a kill. Oh, oh what a match! We gotta match out, yeah. Oh, okay. Razor Leaf does get activated with PK fire. Then we go. It's all about position right now, and I think the stock will be soon for us. Yeah, let's go. Feels like Prospect's pushing for a grab here in the vine whip, perhaps. Okay, so that was an immediate reaction, knee-jerk reaction. He definitely could have got a grab there. And then this is a, just a battle of, like, how much knowledge you have of this, of this, uh, of each character, right? And then, oh, what a whiff punish. That was a, actually a great whiff punish by Prospect, I have to admit. Ooh. That Ivysaur F smash has so much reach on it. It comes out of nowhere. It's uh, almost got the same. Whoa! Yeah, you cannot play around with those uh, short hop aerials coming out of the net. They are always faster than you expect. Like, take your oh. shit. Whoa! <laughs> but like, Prospect had the answer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when, when you're fighting against Ness, you have to consider that there's a lot of, sh there's enough shield stun 
for when in between the aerial, so you're not very sure when you're able when to take your turn. And this is the last stop. This is going to decide the momentum. And I'm I'm going. I'm cheering for my crew right now. Oh, you obviously know who I'm cheering for. Yeah, of course. And then I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it happen. He's baiting. Eva looking really comfortable right now. This is a, a battle of nerves here. Oh, let's go! Let's go. That's how we start. That's how we start. So that was a really close game. Like, uh, bringing it down to one stock. Those one stock differences matter in crew battles, Absolutely. right? So in terms of uh, if, if the next player introduces your next player, who's coming up? Who's coming up? Um, it could be one of two players. We're either going to... Oh! Oh, he that's sat down. Actually, that is not uh, what I expected. Uh, we're having uh, the legendary Akashic Sword coming out here. Ooh. I assume he's going to be one of our anchors. Uh, I do know of Akashic. He, he is the Greninja player, right? Yes, uh, probably the best Greninja in Florida. Also happens to me, I am my younger brother. Your younger brother. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I also like. I also have a family of, of brothers that we also play Smash. I have a nine-year-old one that stayed in Melee, and I have another one that moved into L Ultimate. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, so family of brothers. Uh, you know, family Smash is family. You know, what, what else can you say? Absolutely. Unless it's a crew battle, <laughs> then that <laughs> and then then the family will. Then, then yeah. there's no more family. Now it's all yeah. personal and it's all business. That's uh, I know we're we're pretty cool with most of the people from uh, the Puerto Rico crew, but uh, mm -hmm. not right now. Not right now. No, no it's simpatico. But so, you can tell me a little bit more details because I remember seeing a lot of clips from Akashic when Ultimate started. He was showing us a lot of the stuff that Greninja can do. Absolutely. I would say he was uh, really one of the front runners in the very early Ultimate meta, like really breaking into Greninja and figuring out what tools the character had. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like unlike uh, some of the characters where like we're really only still learning like what they have, like what their special stuff is, the Greninja community really came together and just pushed the envelope right out the gate. Right. And within like a couple of weeks, you already had Leia and Schroeder and Akashic and Venia just out here just doing crazy stuff, getting like absolutely super solid wins. Uh, so now the question is, so uh, Eva bet beat Prospect, you know, with a one stock over. Are, are, are there a lot of Nest players in your region? Because, like, I'm not saying, like, Ness is not an unfamiliar character, but there is, you know, like, if he is able to just control by matchup knowledge, that's what I'm, that's where I'm going to. Um, I have faith in Akashic's matchup knowledge, and I think that's probably why he sent himself out here. Right. Uh, we don't really have a current Ness in our region, mm -hmm. but in Smash 4, he was historically able to defend our region against out-of-region. Out-of-region. That's cool. Including Best Ness. Even Best Ness. Yes. All right. That's great. I... I am uh, fairly confident in his ability to uh, take a stock here mm -hmm. without uh, giving up any unnecessary momentum. So the, I'm, gonna, I'm already going to kind of feel this, this uphill slope for Eval because Schroeder, like, not, not Schroeder, uh, Greninja, because I, I, I relate, sorry. Greninja is so slippery and it's going to be really hard to kind of pin him down for Ness. I want to see how Eval can really keep it close, you know, mat that damage and get those stocks. Ooh. Oh, I see that. I see Akash is trying to get some early kills with that side B right now. He only needs one early kill. Yeah. That's right. You're not playing an entire <laughs> set. You're not playing one game. You're going for one sock. He's just, he's just going for the blitz, trying to take out Eva before he can get comfortable in the neutral here. That's right. Risk and reward here right now. Doesn't, if you can get those kills early on, it's good. Go for it. Oh. oh. But this is kind of rough. I, I can see right now, Eva possibly taking this first stock. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Classic, better be careful not to yeah, misspace a fair forward. You can definitely see that he's getting a little bit more careful. Mm -hmm. pick, trying to pick his moment. Whoa! Oh, I'm not sure what that was. That, I think if, if that had not uh, fallen out, that would have been already the KO. That, I That's it. Leave, and there it is. That's it. That was actually, I, I was ha hoping that uh, that he could have caught him with a pivot grab or shield, you know, shield grab him to get that, you know, that man sweating. But your brother clutched that out real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... Uh, Definitely uh, one to uh, come in the clutch and really buckle down <laughs> on uh, like the last stock situations. And I think here in a crew battle, when he's looking at someone else's last stock on his first, he's just treating his first stock like right. the last stock, right? Mm -hmm. like losing a stock at this point is the same as losing period, and I, and I won't do it. You know, I, I have to agree with that logic. <laughs> you know, I have to agree with that logic. 
losing a stock is unacceptable. Uh, yeah. Unacceptable. And I'm going to talk about now who is our next player. This is Doom. Doom is our basically our premier snake player. He's, a, he's already living here in CFL, but he's basically a ghost player. His work has him, work has him completely busy. Personal, you know, he, he, he has so many hours. So that's so much that when people ask, is Doom coming? Like they ask me, is Doom coming? I, I always say, I don't think so. You know, I don't <laughs> think so. But the thing is, even as a ghost player, he still makes people kind of scared. Oh yeah. Because yeah. he is, like he, he knows Snake from Brawl. He loves combos. He loves the setups. He like he's a man that loves creativity, right? The creativity, not just like you know how I throw a uh, throw a C four here. He loves to actually mix stuff as much as possible with Snake. And uh, yeah, I'll never sleep on a Snake. No. But uh, this is probably a good pick for your team, I'd say. I don't like to admit it because mm -hmm. it's, it's my region, my bro. But, yeah. But uh, the the Snake matchup for Greninja is. Is, is an uphill battle. Oh, it, is, it, it is difficult to keep Snake from playing his game. And if you can't keep Snake from playing his game, then you're not winning. Like, it's so tough because when you, as Greninja, once you start your combo, you really want to keep going at a certain point, right? And Snake just deters that. The, you those know? grenades are like just destroying every confirm that Greninja has. Exactly. He just has to keep on winning neutral piecemeal mm -hmm. and hoping he doesn't get blown up for making a single mistake. And then once again, once again, you saw how they were both playing but the complete opposite sides until finally that one neutral exchange went into the, their one of their favorites, right? Once again, in terms of like how they're playing, you can see Doom is like content with like just camping out first and then see if I can go in. And when he sees your brother go in just a little bit, he goes to the dash attack. And that's and that dash attack is amazing for that. <laughs> there we go. Yes, definitely. You want multiple purpose, you go for the dash attack. Ooh. I am surprised that he was able to get back that ledge guard so uh, well, low key, honestly. He really kind of slipped under. <laughs> Ooh. So, and then, you know, one of the things that it's, it's funny because I do play with Doom, not Smash. I play Apex Legends with him. So, uh, on our free time, when we can, we try to do trio the squad up in Apex Legend. And he loves playing video games. So, that's what I love about Doom. Oh. He's always about putting his, his all his work into that game, you know? Those uh, those down throw situations with Snake are always nerve wracking, wondering who's going to make what read. But uh, Akasha kept his composure and was able to shield the entirety of that up tilt. Ooh. So this is a situation where we both know that a stock is immediate as soon as one of them slips up, right? A missed space aerial, a uh, missed grab, anything right now is uh, the potential first stock for this. Ooh. Ooh. There we go, the missed grab. And then Nikita. Whoa! What's the read going to be? Is oh, oh. up tilt wasn't quite wow. 100%. Oh, and there we go. Akashic does not miss a beat. Nerves of steel getting down thrown by Snake That's at 145 fine. on the ledge. That's <laughs> fine. They're basically even. All we need right now is just the, the regular grab or fish, anything. Boom. Oh, there we go. That's true at that's that it. percent. That's not, that's not going to. Exactly. Like, it, your Akashic had taken so much damage right now, it was basically confirmed. <laughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. Uh, at like 150, 165 down throw into up tilt is just a true combo. You can't get <laughs> yeah. out of it. Like. There you go. Doom once again setting up his grenades, making it really difficult for Akashic to go in. And he just look. He's, he's, he's okay. He's like, huh? you know, you, did, you took the first talk, but once again, I am in the control. I am the one with the momentum. Akashic saying, it's okay if you're winning the percentage game. If I don't let you land a kill move and I just get the stock as soon as I can, percentage-wise, that was a dangerous trade. Oh, that, another up to like that. Could, how light is Greninja? Uh, he's actually pretty light. Uh, I think he's bottom 10, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, that's a great down air. Whoa. That down I really air? thought that Shadow Sneak was going to connect. Oh. <laughs> hey, basically, you and I don't know when that thing is. A, when he gets that down throw, it's a toss up. We oh, don't it, know. It, anybody's game at that point. Whoa! How, the, that wonky hitbox of up did not hit. Uh, it looked actually like the ninja's jab one man oh, oh. with it. Oh my gosh, that was so dangerous. Oh, Whoa, that explosion is huge! Let's go! I imagine Akashic was hoping that his Shadow Sneak would actually hit the Nikita, clanging with it and nullifying the hitbox, but it mm -hmm. seemed to just miss it. I really don't know how. That's, that's a KO. That's there, definitely a KO. 
There it is. Mm -hmm. 177 oh my after God. hit. All right, let's go, Doom. You can Snakes actually. Snake's a big boy. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the for Doom to clutch it out. Don't uh, and make sure that he comes with good momentum because this is it. For me, this is it. This is, this is a very dangerous uh, situation for Southwest Florida because it's very hard not to lose a stock to Snake. Yes. <laughs> Snake is so explosive. Even when you're like, you know, uh, you're at a, a, a good percent of uh, advantage, it's really difficult to to clutch that kill out. At least Greninja has those setups. At the same time, the caliber of a uh, player you're talking about with Akashic, if he gets this stock, <gasps> oh, Puerto Rico is in a very dangerous spot because they could potentially lose. Oh, oh no! no! You hate to see him do it to him. Well, I didn't hate it. All right, you're you know, uh, Crusader talks for two here. <laughs> he talks about it, uh, Kasek, and he's talking about himself. He does not hate it. <laughs> but, uh, oh. Okay. That, that felt good for Akashic because while he's definitely gotten tournament matchup experience against Snake, uh, mm -hmm. running into MVD multiple times, yeah. NEG in Tampa, he consistently loses the matchup. <laughs> so to just take a game cleanly on a stage like this, he's yeah. got to be feeling himself right now. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. We, we got the next player. Just we have your to head back. Hold yeah. the tears in. Let it yeah. dry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'm confident. I. What what next? What's coming up next is the turtle monster, the oh, Koopa himself, the Boozer. Like you know, I play against Bowser every time, right? And you know when you get hit by stuff, you're like, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, like when you get hit by Florida when it, from the up top, and then you get hit by Florida from the complete bottom, oh, and you're like, well. you're like. How does this make sense? It like this doesn't work. Wait, like, what? Wh why is this character as fast as Greninja? I don't get <laughs> it. <laughs> like I'm trying to camp him, but he's already in my face. <laughs> like in in that sense, how would you think this matchup would work out? Uh, I mean, Akashic's got the matchup experience, but anything can happen. He's down to one stock. It, it's not impossible to think that uh, with uh, Bowser's the early KO tools yeah. that something might happen. Exactly. Like that aerial command grab coming in and... Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, earlier in pools, Jose Pan actually got an uh, early KO kill. Oh, he started with an attack. Yeah, yeah, they have to reset. Uh, but earlier in the pools, he it was... I think Jose Pan... Yeah. Oh, no, they're just resetting it. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Akashi threw a shuriken. He was like, yes. you need to jump into it. You know, I need the... It's the reflexes. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I was, uh, in the pool, he was playing against a snake, and on uh, Snake's last stop, he broke his shield with a down beat, and uh, and he was moved him, he moved them a little bit from the middle, just a little bit under the middle of the side platform of battlefield, and the snake was at 23 percent, and he still died at a, at a half charge forward smash. That's what that's what I mean about cheesy kills. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> Bowser is that kind of character. Yeah, if, if we see a shield break here with Greninja's lightness, it is very possible we could see the Bowser kick overdrive come into play. So here's a question. Do you have any yes. idea how they're doing stage picks and stage bans? They actually not explain the rules to me. I understand that uh, so game we, in game uh, versus Doom and Akasic, we they played in PS2, right? Uh, yes. So that, that, that felt very much like Doom's pick, but mm -hmm. this feels like Akashic's pick exactly. on FD with Greninja. So I, I'm not sure how the, the counter picks are working. There we go. Oh. Uh, command grab. Oh, wow. How much percent was that? Uh, it looks close to 20. Jeez. <laughs> I'm honestly very. Oh, that I thought that guy. was a grab. Oh, so this, this could be it. This yeah. could be it as long as he. Uh... Oh, he waited. He let go of oh. shield and grab. Akashic's looking to take at least one stock here. Oh no! Give Southwest Florida that added momentum. Oh, whoa! Invincibility! Whoa! He perfectly times that get up. Rox to Jose there. That could be it. Oh, not true. No, <gasps> oh, fine. Come on. Some of those conversions aren't going to be working at this percent, so Akasha's going to have to make an air dodge read to catch him. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Or he could just go for the Randy Shadow. Speed. That's it. No, Run, no. Fair, does it? Let's see if uh, he can make this stock count too. There's no such thing as extra credit in the field battle. Oh you no. You either hit the stock or you don't. There we go. Okay. 
All right. Okay, that's okay. That's a one stock lead. That's a one stock lead. Jose Punk can definitely bring it back. Uh, Bowser's that kind of character. Yes. I, and I believe in him. I, this is this is this is me on adult, you know, on a on a on baseless faith, baseless faith <laughs> into Jose Punk. Who's that? All right. So here we have Core, who is a DDD main. DDD. Oh yes, and he is a very very tricky DDD. He, you, mm. you are going to see some tricks. No, you're, I don't know. DDD. You're, you you're going to see nasty ledge traps. You're going to see dying at zero from a shield break. <laughs> 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 like, like this. Uh, this is a interesting. Uh, he he must have wanted it. I'm I'm thinking he volunteered he, for this. He probably you know when you think about like DDD and when he fights another big body, it kind of it's kind of like an even thing depending on the characters, right? You have DDD, you have Bowser, which are probably you know, and Incineroar, which are right now the hottest heavies right now, right? The hottest heavies. That's in that's terms fair. of popularity. Yeah, yeah in terms of popularity. And when they cut, when I've seen a lot of the heavies play each other, it's really a slobber knocker. You know, it's really either their one stock is completely one sided or they're both like trading hits. It all depends right now in terms of fundamentals right now. Because when it comes to matchups, I feel like the heavies pretty much destroy each other. Yes. Um, Bowser is definitely going to have an advantage here in the speed department. Mm -hmm. So. Core is going to have to play his boxing game well. Right. It's something he's used to. Just as a DD main in general, you have to play that boxing game in every match. I just gotta hope that Jose Pan has got the uh, can control the Gordo game. That's all I need to know, and that's why that's all Look I want. Look at him. Look at him. He's just sitting there. Let's go. One. We like to say that the, the looks on DDD's faces are very much like part of his game plan. Like, right. Like that face, like is just tilting to look at. The, his smug, smat satisfaction, <laughs> like with everything that oh. he does, it makes you want to run in on him sloppy, and that is when you lose your stuff. Oh. You know, I'm definitely. S oh, I see what he's doing already. <laughs> uh, start charging the down B already. Oh, he. Yeah, he does not shy away from using the whole toolkit. Oh, oh, he charges a little bit too much, giving us Jose Pan the chance. Oh, Jose Pan definitely looking to uh, get an early kill. It looks like he's uh, feeling it out, trying to see how scared Jose Pan is, but he so far is not blinking. Oh, jump reads. No. Oh. No. He had to do it to him. It, it's just that, you know, areas are, the, Bowser's areas are amazing. You know, you would expect them to use a jump to get that started up, but you got the read and you got that back here. Might that as well let it rip, right? Yeah, that was a good trade with the Gordo there to keep DDD from really getting any stage control off mm -hmm. of that neutral win. He stucks it. He sticks it every time. How does he do it? Oh, he actually mashed out in time. And Bowser has an improved recovery now. Remember, he, of all the heavies that you expect to come low, I would not expect Bowser to come from so so under. You know? Absolutely. It's interesting seeing Inhale in this matchup because <laughs> I'm not really sure oh. how Bowser gets around it. That was that was definitely the Inhale. right answer. Don't oh oh is this? Oh he was. He knew I what to do. That was a that's a trap. If you're not buffering the air dodge mm -hmm. during that inhale period, he's buffering the up tilt, and he'll get it if you're not already buffering the air dodge. Oh no! It is, however, a 50-50. Mm -hmm. You can read the buffered air dodge. Or wait and, for it. Yeah. That happened on stream earlier. I'm trying to remember exactly who was playing, but a, a DVD got the game three last hit situation. And as soon as I saw him hold the inhale, I knew what was happening. Okay, so at this percent right now, even if the command grab is kind of fresh, I don't think he would get the KO on DDD. He's that kind of character. Oh, whoa! So this is, you do not want to be in this situation at this percent against DDD. So of course, gotta read that he's gonna just keep on coming in high to get around mm -hmm. Gordo and to not mess with the uh, the grounded hammer pressure. Oh, that, I think that's it. That could be? No, oh, no, he was no. mid stage, that's he's correct. A big boy. Yeah? <gasps> what? Oh my god, I'm getting confused. Your brother, the, this this guy is definitely confused. Oh, oh no! That's good for sure. No, core. Oh man, my dreams are in shambles. And that's the thing you got to remember about a crew battle. That 150% mm -hmm. on the second stock, mm -mm. it's gone. You either take the stock or you don't. Oh no. <laughs> 
So okay, Jose Fran, I saw I saw him getting oh. better. He saw he was getting better. He was doing he was going for command grab more often. He definitely was being more careful with DDD's Gordo usage, but there was just the setups. You know, it was the setups. He got the jump read and then the setups. You know, and now number one player from PR coming in. It's Pac Man. All right, and I, the big guns. and I gotta tell you, when I play him, I feel dumb. I, I was watching actually a, a just friendly money match that he was having with Myron earlier, and I was impressed. Yeah, like, I've seen some good Batman play in the game so far. I watched mm -hmm. a lot of like uh, T from Japan, yeah, T, like, on stream, and like, the mm -hmm. the stuff that he was doing was nasty. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's just the thing is, it's like he likes he loves Smash, right? He 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 really in, genuinely loves Smash for a lot. Uh, and he was the very like high like ah oh, I want to study it as much as possible. He was a very studious type, and when it comes to characters that he wanted to use, for example in Smash 4, he wanted to use Mario, Pac-Man, and he didn't find a much success with them. So he moved on to Cloud and Sheep, and then he got better results back then, later on. In here, Pac-Man is good, and he can use the character he wants. So that's why he's so passionate about get labbing these things. Yeah. Batman has a uh, hundred and one tricks, and uh, if you don't know them all, he can make the matchup kind of uh, a living hell for you. There you go. I know that it's not something that Core was uh, particularly comfortable with doing, so uh, we'll see if he can uh, maintain a good mindset and his momentum going into this. When I think about Blue Battles, it's like the power, like who has the, the ability of adapting on the fly. You know what I mean? It's not. This is not. This is not a best of one. This is like you only have two stocks or one stocks, and you know you work exactly what you got. You know, and you gotta adapt. You gotta predict, and you gotta hold on. You know. And well, that platform could give him an extra way out in this situation. Ooh. Oh, that was a questionable roll. Wow. Possibly a uh, misinput or a uh, buffered input. So there you saw E King did the si uh, the the power ball upward. This is how. Oh, it, what? No! What? The best Batmans are the ones that make the character look good yeah. even without the projectiles. Yes. Those, those fair strings are can be nasty. The thing is, is that I didn't expect that. <laughs> I'm like looking at it. It's like I'm just trying. I'm trying to prepare something, and then Inking just gets a cinematic. And I'm like, what happened? Oh, looks like we're just jumping straight to it. The big Ooh. guns are coming out. Myron. And, and they were in, and they had a money match like. Maybe four or five hours ago, yes, right? Yes. Had a money match. It went to game five. Went to game five. Game Myron five. is very good at making things go to game five. Yes. Just ask Mars. Like, and when I and I studied and I was while I was watching it, I studied it. That matchup is pretty even, in the sense that if Pac-Man waits for Allmar to throw the Pikmins, and he has, for example, the bell, the the flower, or the mm -hmm. key, they'll go right through the Pikmin. Any of the other fruits will get stuck. Mm -hmm. Hydrant play is a really big thing in this mm -hmm. matchup. And something that I saw him doing against Myron earlier that I really appreciated is uh, sometimes he would just put the hydrant out there and it was just bait. He was exactly. just saying, waste time hitting this hydrant, not like knocking it towards me. That's not even part of my game plan. Exactly. I'm setting up for something else later and I just want you to be standing there. Exactly. And like the, the, the fact that the hydrant can force a person to take an option is ridiculous. It, like, it makes you jump. It makes you hit it. It makes you like avoid it. It, any of these options are all favorable, basically, for mm -hmm. the Pac-Man players. So yes. Eking, when he, when when Myron was focused on that, Eking either charged up the fruit or with punish when he, when Myron tried to punish it. So there was like a lot of back and forth, and I'm hopeful to see that right now. And you can often put yourself in a bad position hitting Hydrant if you don't make it count enough to actually right. get it to launch. Like, like Purple Bigman can definitely bring it down with an up smash or a forest smash, With right? almost anything, I would say. But Air, yeah. side B. Mm -hmm. No, no, it takes two purple side Bs. Yeah. I did learn that watching this matchup earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, two, two side Bs will take, take down the Hydrant. But the question is, how often will Myron have the Pikmin available? So that's also part of the matchup. If mm -hmm. Pac-Man is constantly destroying the the Pikmin because Nair Nair was actually destroying the Pikmin really good. Oh, yeah. Like it was, that Nair was actually really strong and up air as well. Up air was doing really well against uh, when the Pikmin were stuck on him or really well. Uh, the next thing was he just destroys all Pikmin. So it's a matter of like can Myron 
keep the the Alamores alive or c constantly oppress Ikin? Uh, I would say that uh, the money match from earlier could be helping Myron out in this instance. Mm -hmm. He definitely started down versus E King, mm -hmm. and once he started to learn some of the patterns and specifically yeah. how to hold on to his purples mm -hmm. and to the exactly. lineup that he wanted, that's when he was able to buckle down mm -hmm. and shift momentum. Yes, let's, let's go, see. let's go. This is like this is energy. Is Look at that. Off. There we go. When we go, twenty percent because he took down the hydrant. No purples yet. I was joking uh, before I came on stream with everybody in Southwest Florida. I'm probably the first commentator on mic in a uh, in a major in a while for Smash Ultimate that has anything nice to say about all of them. What? <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> but in terms, like I'm seeing, like we're seeing exactly like us that like, uh, we were spectating that money match. We're seeing very similar to what happened in that, in that money match, you know. And the thing is, I gotta tell you, the both game, two of the games that he lost were in Pokemon Stadium 2. So this is a good counter pick by Myron, actually, because these these stages actually were favorable for Alamar. The uh, platform layout, I would say, doesn't give Pac-Man uh, all that much opportunity to escape the it, ledge. That's easily correct. Against Myron's uh, burst options. Ooh. Oh, that was a very well spaced S smash. Yeah, he actually good awareness to realize that that would take the high risk. Oh, and he, oh, he punishes the ledge attack. It's okay. There, it, right now, uh, the way how Myron's percentage is looking, uh, uh, set up with the belt definitely can take the KO, and that's what what Ikim's searching for. Ikim actually is also showed me uh, the, how he can put away the items really quick, but Myron constantly putting the pressure. He's not letting go. Oh, oh he, damn. He, lots of players aren't comfortable playing with that uh, grab when it's active like that, but Myron said, no, I know exactly where I can walk up and start my attack. And I don't know if you noticed earlier when the hydrant was on the platform, it seemed as if Myron, like, did an empty short hop and kind of hovered near it. Oh. Like he was going to use an aerial on it, but it was a bait. He didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. He was just waiting to see what E King was going to do. Oh, the apple! So at this percent, apple is the one that will launch upwards. And since all of them are so light, it definitely can kill already at this 130% mark. Um, so we can see those kind of things. Oh, that oh. upper. Almost. Ooh. It's always hard to tell what's actually going to kill all and there we go. the apple. <laughs> yeah. The apple kills off the top. Oh, he misses the flower. He's had a high percent, but Pac-Man actually is ri ri ridiculous when he gets a combo going. There's a lot of percentages that start. Oh, I, th I, I was confused by that for a second. It was a desync yellow S smash that was actually on the platform hoping to catch a jump. Mm-hmm. Very deceptive. I'm not sure if E King saw it and voided intentionally, or I think he was just playing, waiting <laughs> it out. You know, sometimes you just gotta wait it out. Ooh, uh, you know the water actually scared me there. I thought it was gonna work against E King's favor. Oh, once again, the Pikmin above in the platform. He's looking for that jump, definitely. Oh, definitely. Um, if he gets that pluck below the platform. Uh, anything but a purple Pikmin will mm. land on the platform in most instances. Oh, that was a purple. That, that was, was a fat nice. one. Monique mm -hmm. coming in, getting mm -hmm. those early kills. No, this is okay. This is still okay. Because I consider this uh, still relatively even. Because one apple takes a kill. Absolutely. Uh, this is uh, ooh, about ooh. momentum. That was a scary place to be. Hovering oh. under under Olimar with that purple Pikmin and that crazy strong down air. Oh my god. This is very good percent. damage for Myron. E King needs to take the stock soon mm -hmm. if he wants to reverse the momentum in any meaningful way. Yes. E King's already almost a Whoa. for a good portion of Myron's toolkit here. So hard to affect. Oh no! No! Oh my god! <laughs> the Pikmin worked against his favor, keeping the hitbox lasting for a longer time. That was a very uh, interesting interaction because most of the time uh, a Pikmin playing with something doesn't really extend Olimar's like, hit lag. Normally it looks oh, like. Oh, the spot the dodge! There we go. Good oh. spot dodge read. Just whip it out, end it early, say, no, I want to keep this stock. So, what? how many do we have left? Is it. Puerto Rico has one last player, it's Meanie. 
He's going to be the, the Inkling Wolf player. And Myron has one stop, but it's Myron's stop. That's the thing. It's a Myron stop. It's a, it's a Myron stop. It's a Myron stop. <laughs> so this is my boy. This is me. Him and I, we, we, are, we are a close friendship. We are, one of the things I love about Mini, one of his, I would say, of his brand is dark humor. Dark humor. Uh, lots of times he's like, why do I play this character? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like you know, when, when he was starting out in Ultimate with Luigi, it's like, oh, tears. What? You know, it's a, and, you know, he would post in the group chat the crying Luigi picture. And it's like, this is Luigi after I tell him it's over between us, you know. <laughs> That's the kind of dark humor that Friendship I... Friendship terminated with yeah. Luigi. Friendship. Inkling is my friend now. Exactly. <laughs> So it, and honestly, I like I like Mini because he's the kind of player that he likes to bounce back after losses, uh, and he always likes to ask advice. He's never very open to that. But what I love is how he improved. Because I gotta tell you, his story is impressive. Because he's got some of the greatest parents in the world. He was known in Smash 4 Puerto Rico, the Road Warrior. The Road Warrior. Because he was literally lived like basically one of the corners of the island of Puerto Rico, right? And his mom would take him to basically all the events possible. And then, like they, like there was a, a, a weekly that was like last minute announced for the two next uh, the two days can coming. He was there. His mom would take him. Uh, there was an event. There was a weekly that was in the other corner of the island. His he would be there with his mother. And there was just like supportive mom. And he, with that, he just a great. It's just a great guy. Well, I hate to root against a guy like that, yeah. but he has an uphill battle to climb here. Not only does he have to overcome a Myron stock, mm -hmm. which feels like it counts for more than one, yeah. but at this point, Southwest Florida's remaining anchor is no slouch, and uh, I guess I will tell you more about him if we get there. If we get <laughs> there, right? <laughs> well, maybe off, uh, off screen, if we don't get there, you'll tell me who it was either way, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Oh. So very powerful uh, in terms of parry. Uh, when it comes to the defensive game, Myron is really good on point with that, right? So yeah. if if Inkling, if Mini isn't able to get those confirms or the, the the punishes on that Myron defense, it's going to be really tough to you know even get this stock going. You know, he's, he's really going to have to utilize Inkling's movement because whereas uh, E King is that his name? Sorry. Yeah, um, E King. Yes. Uh, whereas he had Patman's projectile pressure and sort of boxing game to try to like keep Myron from being too in his face. Inkling doesn't have the same type of tools to keep Olimar from just aggressing, 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 Ooh. and being an absolutely smothering presence of powerful hitboxes. So, this is this is very possible. Oh, oh, what was that? He teched it. He, that was a what very a man, man. very good tech. I'm actually surprised he didn't get untackable spin from a purple back. No! Oh, what's going on? <laughs> I'm jumping out of my seats. <laughs> oh my god! Oh! Very well timed snap. Uh, it's uh, very difficult okay. to uh, recover on the ledge against that yellow Ooh. down smash at the ledge. Let's oh. go! Let's go, Meanie. Get his KO. Just take it easy. Oh! That's that's a, a painful loss of momentum here. Guaranteedly going to the last man standing with uh, okay, uneven that's stock it. count. That's it, okay. Let's go. Yeah, dang. Meanie had a chance to, to, to take the stock. It was really close because they were both fidgeting. They were tweaking. They were both like, when's it going to when's come? When's, the, when's my opportunity? And... Myron just threw the force smash and knowing that he wanted to dash in because he was in the corner. It was right. like any other, any corner opponent, it's like, oh, I got to protect myself. And the force smash was there. All right, so I got to tell you about my boy on Civil Ninja. Uh, there used to be a time during Smash 4 when Uncivil Ninja was just considered bad. 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 Okay, like, the story. Uh, like, not, not to mince words. Mm -hmm. He had a somewhat legendary encounter at our monthly with Fatality Falcon from Georgia when we flew him in. And he got clipped so painfully hard. It's probably the best Captain Falcon combo clip in an actual bracket match in Smash 4. So he, he, I'm not exactly. He was known for the clip. <laughs> he, yeah, it, he became infamously known for the clip, and he disappeared from the scene for months. Oh, no. Went to the Wi-Fi waste, trained, like, in the mountains somewhere <laughs> with some Shulk gurus. With, with the Shulk gurus and, and the waterfall and on top of him. came back a completely different person. Suddenly, he's 
getting top three at the weeklies. He's on the PR. Within a few months, he manages to actually take a weekly mm -hmm. and suddenly uncivils the up and comer. Up like, and you, comer. You don't, you don't ignore uncivil. You can. Kevin recently, just two weeks ago, took a weekly over Myron, just days before Myron went to win second at town. Wow. Like, consider that. So, you know, you're, lo you're looking at one of the rising Shulk stars in Ultimate. We got up. We got. We got good days. We got great days. I'm going for Meanie. I'm sorry, <laughs> Meanie. Two stock down. I believe in him. You, you want to do the, the Cinderella story? This is a Cinderella story. He has two shoes left, and they're made out of crystal, so they're very fragile. But I'm going for it. You know, I'm going for it. All right, Uncivil. All right, the tension is brewing. And this this stage is it. feels so epic for the yeah. final confrontation of this crew battle. You no matter what happens, this is it. Mm -hmm. This went to the last player. You know, we were going to the last it was, player. It was a, a very uh, close match. Uh, Myron and Akasha put in plenty of work. He's taking five stocks each, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Akashic, Akashic and Myron were definitely MVPs in terms of how many stocks were taken. Uh, Puerto Rican players were good in terms of finishing out the, the, the remaining stock. You know, only sometimes losing one stock. Like, Jose finally only lost one stock and then brought it back close. Mm -hmm. Mini lost one stock, but it's still, you know, it's still close. They never allow South West Florida to take too demanding, or commanding rather, of a lead. Mm -hmm. That was a very, very dangerous situation. Shielding a uh, charged buster down smash is a great way to just get shield broke. Yeah. It will lock you into the shield stun. You won't That's be able right. to drop shield. So very, very good awareness to time the get up attack and uh, not get stuffed. Oh, smash our choke on the ledge. Oh, Perhaps that's a one of the most dangerous beasts in this game, the Smash Art Choke on the ledge. Mini is actually, returning in, ter in terms of damage, he's been really mitigating the amount he's been re receiving. So it's very important mm -hmm. to keep good mindset against Shulk, especially when speed art and jump art are in play. Mm -hmm. Because you may be losing neutral a lot, but the damage is not very severe in those two Monado arts. You Ooh. just have to watch for losing your jump and getting gimped until he switches to Smash Art, and then you have to watch for dying at 70 to fair. Right. Now, question. Now, I do not know this, right? But are you able to change art while you're being buried? While you're being buried? Yeah. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I, I should know this. I don't think so. You can't. Ooh, oh, let's very, go, Mini. Let's go. Very nice. Very nice. I have to give credit where credit was due. That was a good Yeah, stop. let's go. Any other stage, that would have definitely been it. But Kalos, we are living. What does oh. Uncivil do? He answers. What is this? He's using shield? Is that to keep shield. himself closer to the ground? Yeah, um, it lowers the uh, ending lag of all of his moves, but <sighs> still keeps his fast falling speed. So he can box extremely well, throw out lots of really fast aerials, and it's almost nothing actually confirms against Shield Shulk. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to just run the clock, getting almost free damage. Very difficult to oh! contain him. Oh, this Edgar situation is it! And the young ninja from Southwest mm -hmm. Florida claims victory for the crew. Yeah. So. It <laughs> yeah! All right. So. Honestly, I really. I, I hate to see you go so soon. Yeah. It was a pleasure commentating like, with you. Like in terms of players, I really wanted to showcase how, like, the, our the variety of players that we have. We have variety of characters. And whoa, something happened. Definitely, on that definitely screen. happened. And then, but you know, we're still gonna take the loss. I'm it was very respectable, <laughs> you know. But that's how it is. You know, sometimes that's how it goes. I'm going to guess that CFL just got a clutch win because yes. they storm. <laughs> <laughs> They're on stage right there, dancing and everything. Somebody's doing a truffle shuffle over there. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, you know that's. You know, when you have to say goodbye, you have to do it with a, you know, with a bow and grace. You know, it was a good game, good fight, actually. And, uh, you know, that's how we're going to set it off. You know, 
PR is here in Country Papa. We have that a couple players went and got out of their pool, so you know, still paging. We're it's not the last you're going to see oh, of us. Oh, definitely not. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll see uh, uh, more than a few of these players on screen tomorrow. Definitely. So As we continue to top 128. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, top 28 tomorrow. And thank you guys for having us over, and uh, hope to see you again.